And now we are on to episode four in my beginner's guide, how to build a gaming PC video series. If you haven't yet seen episodes one, two, and three, I've linked them in the cards up here, as well as in the video description down below. Uh, and for those of you that have already watched episodes one, two, and three, then you're probably ready for me to just shut up and... So at the end of episode two, I got a little ahead of myself by having you go ahead and install your motherboard into your case before testing everything and making sure it boots and is all working correctly and everything. Uh, I personally haven't ever had a DOA CPU or motherboard, uh, knock on wood, uh, but I have heard of it happening on rare occasions, so any good tech geek, uh, it's debatable whether I'm one of them or not, uh, would recommend that you hook everything up outside of your case first to make sure the system posts before going and screwing your motherboard into place. With the CPU, CPU cooler, and RAM installed into your motherboard, you're ready to hook up your power supply and do a test boot. Let's start things off by plugging in our 24-pin motherboard power cable, which is this big one here. The great thing about these is that some of the pins are keyed, meaning they're shaped a little differently, allowing you to only plug it in one way. So you don't need to worry about plugging it in incorrectly. The power connector has this little latch thing on it that clips over a little notch on the motherboard connector, which helps secure the cable in place and lets you know that the cable is plugged in all the way. Uh, we then need to connect our CPU power connector, which depending on your motherboard will either require a four pin or eight pin connector. Once we have those two plugged in, to do our test boot, we're going to need to install our graphics card. Uh, since you're watching this video, I feel I can assume one of two things. That you're one of my subscribers, being as kind as ever, and watching this video even though you already know how to do all this stuff, or that you're new to the PC DIY world and are ready for me to show you what to do. So first, remove the little plastic cover from the motherboard interface pins on your graphics card. Then flip down the latch on the top PCI Express socket on your motherboard. Align the pins with the socket and then firmly press the card down into the slot until it fully seats and the latch locks into place. You can then plug the PCI Express power cables from your power supply into your card. Now, depending on your card, you may need either one or two six or eight pin power connectors or one of each which is what my gtx 970 uses there are also some cards that do not require any additional power they're powered solely from the pci express slot which means all you have to do is seat the card into the slot and you're good to go we'll then need to connect a monitor to our graphics card so we can see whether the system is posting or not and with all of that in place we can finally plug our power supply into the wall, turn the power on to it, and boot up our system. Some motherboards come with power buttons on them that you can use for this, but if your motherboard doesn't have one, uh, don't worry about it. Uh, to turn your system on, you'll need to locate the system panel header on your motherboard. These are the pins that the power button, reset button, and hard drive LED for your case all connect to. Some motherboards have the pins labeled right on the board. Uh, for others, you'll need to consult your motherboard manual to see which pins to use. All you have to do is bridge the power button positive and negative pins with a screwdriver or something, and your system will, uh, well, should turn on. So when powering your system on for the very first time, it may turn on and off several times before you see anything really on the monitor. Uh, you know you've been successful when you see a message telling you to push a key to enter setup. At this point, you'll want to power the system down, disconnect your graphics card and all your power cables, and then screw your motherboard into your case.
Now, before we go and start plugging in all our power cables uh, again, I think we should start by plugging in our power button, reset button, and hard drive LED and whatnot. Uh, I found it's nice to do these first because they're very small and they can be difficult to connect, especially when you have big fat fingers like I do. Uh, and it's also nice to get them all plugged in before you install other things like your graphics card that has a tendency to uh, get in your way. Um, like I said earlier, you may have to look at your motherboard manual to see what plugs onto which pins. Uh, for stuff that has a positive and negative pin, you'll want to make sure you plug in your wires correctly, uh, otherwise they don't work. So next up, I like to plug in my front panel I.O. like USB ports and headphone and microphone jacks. Uh, let's start off with our front panel audio. It looks like this and says HD audio on it. Most motherboards now have printing on the board that tells you which header is your HD audio header. Uh, however, if uh, your motherboard does not, uh, don't worry about it. Your motherboard manual will have a diagram in it pointing out which one it is. The HD audio plug is keyed so it can only go on one way. You'll notice that there is no pinhole here on the plug. Uh, that of course corresponds with the missing pin on the actual motherboard header itself. Uh, once you have the plug properly oriented, it should easily slide right onto the header. And that's it! Uh, we can now move on to our USB 2.0 headers. As of the making of this video, it's still pretty common for cases to have front panel USB 2 ports. As time goes on, I'm certain that this is going to change, uh, but as for now, connecting them is identical to connecting the HD audio header. Uh, just like the audio header, these plugs are also keyed to only fit onto the header in one direction. So you'll want to check to make sure you have your plug properly oriented and then just simply push it onto the pins. The last thing on the list of our front panel I.O. is USB 3 ports. The USB 3 plug is completely different looking than all the others and plugs onto a USB 3 header which looks like this. Uh, once again, it can only be plugged in one way, so all you have to do is line up the little nub on the plug with the notch on the header and push it on in. Uh, I would recommend being gentle as you do this and make sure that the pins on the board properly align with the holes on the plug as best as you can. I once plugged one in with a little too much zeal and unknowingly bent some of the pins which of course caused my USB ports not to work properly. Uh, after a bunch of troubleshooting, I opened up my case to see if I could figure out what was wrong and uh, after unplugging it, I saw the bent pins and had to very carefully straighten them back out, uh, trying my best not to break them off because they are pretty fragile. Depending on the case you're building in, there are a couple of different ways that your drives are going to mount into it. Uh, some cases have you screw your drives directly into the drive cage, and others will use drive sleds or some other toolless uh, drive mounting method. As for screwing it directly to the case, it's you know pretty straightforward. Um, you place your drive into a slot in the drive cage, uh, line up the screw holes in the drive with the mounting points on your case, and then screw it into place. As for toolless drive mounts, every manufacturer seems to come up with their own method, so hopefully your case comes with some documentation on how to use their mounting system. All of the toolless mounting systems that I have used uh, are actually very intuitive and easy to use, so there's nothing to worry about, you'll be just fine. As for my case, the Rosewill Viper Z, it has these drive sleds that you can just clip your standard 3.5 inch hard drive into like so, and then slide it into a slot in the drive cage. Uh, these sleds also accommodate 2.5 inch drives, however, because they're so much smaller than a 3.5 inch drive, uh, they have to be screwed onto the sled. We're now ready to connect our drives up to our motherboard. 
So grab the SATA cables out of your motherboard box and connect one end to your drive and the other end to one of the SATA ports on your motherboard. Now all we need to do is get our power supply installed, uh, hook power up to everything, and uh, that should be about it. Just like installing your storage drives, uh, depending on what case you're using, you'll either be mounting your power supply directly to your case, or first to a mounting bracket and then to your case. As for orienting your power supply, if your case has vents cut into it for your power supply, uh, then you'll want to place the fan on your PSU toward those vents so your power supply can draw in fresh air through those vents. If your case does not have any vents for your power supply, uh, then you're going to want to position the fan facing into your chassis like this, uh, allowing your PSU to breathe. Since we already tested our system, these next couple steps will be very familiar to you. Uh, go ahead now and plug in your 24-pin motherboard power, as well as your CPU power. Your case is likely to have at least one fan that comes with it, and in order for that fan to do anything, it will of course need some power. Uh, fans usually come with either a motherboard fan power connector on them, which looks like this, a 4-pin Molex connector, which looks like this, or sometimes they will have both of them. Most motherboards have several different chassis fan headers on them, so if your fan or fans have the motherboard power fan connectors on them, you can just find an available chassis fan header on your board, and plug it in. For fans with 4-pin Molex connectors on them, you need to power those guys off of a cable from your power supply. Your power supply should have at least one cable that has some Molex plugs on it that you can connect those fans onto. The last thing we need to power before plugging in our graphics card and powering our system up is our storage drives. Uh, both our hard drive and our SSD use what is called a SATA power connector. Your power supply should have at least one cable on it that will have several power connectors on it that look like this. Uh, these are SATA power connectors and they simply plug onto the terminal on the back of your drive like so. Uh, as for cable management, uh, every case is a little bit different. Uh, so. You know, I'm, I'm not going to be that jerk that tells you how to live your life. So, at this point, I'll uh, leave you to route your cables as you see fit. Our final item of business before powering our system on is to install your graphics card. I like to wait to install my graphics card until last because quite often it can get in the way of plugging in other components so it just makes things easier to save it for last. If you're using an AMD APU or are just using the integrated graphics on an Intel CPU then you can skip this step but I'm guessing the vast majority of you guys watching this video are planning on installing a discrete graphics card so here's how it's done. Depending on the size of your card, you're first going to need to remove one, two, or maybe even three expansion slot covers from the back of your case. Uh, there's usually a screw that you undo like this to remove them. Most graphics cards nowadays are double slot cards, so you'll want to remove the cover that's in line with the top PCI Express slot on your motherboard and the one just below it. You can now install your card the same way you did when we did our test boot earlier, uh, by flipping down the latch, slotting the card onto the board, and connecting the power cables. To secure the card into your case, you'll want to take the screws from the expansion slot covers we just removed a little bit ago, and use them to secure your card into place. And that brings us to the end of this video. Uh, a lot of other computer building tutorials I've seen 
actually end here and leave you to fend for yourself to get your computer up and running and usable. But not to fear, Brian isn't going to do what most other people do. Uh, I'll be back in episode 5 and we'll be powering up our system, doing some initial setup stuff in the BIOS, uh, installing Windows and our drivers so your system will not only be assembled, but fully usable as well. Uh, thanks so much for hanging out and watching the video. I hope that it has been educational and at least a little bit entertaining. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please click the thumbs up button before you head out. And also consider subscribing to my channel where you can see more videos like this one. Uh, the comment section down below is... Uh, ready and waiting if you have any questions for me or you would just like to shoot the breeze. Uh, thanks again for taking some time out of your day to hang out with me for a little bit. I hope that you have a great day. Um, we'll see you next time.